Welcome to my internship project-based course motion graphics week one bonus video. This week I'll be presenting a modification to the Bevel Plus workflow shown in this week's instructional videos. I'll begin by reviewing the current technique which includes identifying issues that may arise in some situations. This will lead to an overview of my modified workflow which seeks to alleviate these issues when they do arise and I'll conclude with a comparison of the two techniques. The current method for the Bevel Plus workflow begins by importing a reference image into your image plane of your front camera and then tracing out the text or the logos using either the CVEP or the Bezier curves and then building geometry from those curves using the Bevel Plus tool and then to go into the attributes of the Bevel Plus on the geometry and to bevel inside the curves so that the geometry is restricted to perfectly match the curves uh, and then to tweak the uh, curve style and to get the bevel width and bevel depth and the uh, extrusion distance and the the curve spans to get the desired look of the logo and a professional quality to the look. Now this method is great for most situations when creating text or logos for motion graphics but there are rare occasions when some issues arise with this technique. Uh, if you do need a th very thick bevel width to get the correct look for your logo or you need a lot of curve spans to smooth out a very complicated piece of geometry, you're going to get this artifact where all these kind of faces are touching this open close point of this curve. So it's either the curve spans are too high or the bevel width is too high. You're going to get this artifacting going on. So the traditional technique is to start with a low bevel width and a low curve span and then to kind of build each up slowly to find the kind of level that suits your needs for your motion graphic and most of the time this works but in cases where you do need a higher resolution of the bevel width or the curve span then is supported by the geometry and when you do get this artifacting it's because you're beveling inside the curves um, and another thing that can happen is you can see that when the bevel width starts getting high enough you see that some areas of your geometry might start to get distorted like I might need a, a strong bevel width for this logo project but you can see here in this little indent of the th number three that it's too extreme the actual bevel is almost coming in all the way up the center part of this three so these are the two main issues that will happen that can sometimes happen with the current method of the bevel plus technique it's either the bevel width or the curve spans get too high causing this artifacting or the bevel width is too high and you get this kind of distortion in the geometry. So these are the two issues that my modification seeks to alleviate when these issues do arise. Now the modification to the bevel plus workflow starts off very simply. First off you just turn off bevel inside the curves and then you can find the correct bevel width um, and the correct curve spans that is needed for your geometry. Now you'll notice that this gets rid of this distortion in the um, in some areas of the geometry where this is a problem 
and it gets rid of this um, this artifacting that happens when you do high bevel width and high curve spans. But your geometry doesn't fit within the curve. Now the curve is the I colored it yellow so you can see it here. And you can see that the letter, the number three, is actually coming out around outside of it. So if it's a simple geometry, you could just do a modify center pivot and shrink the geometry down. But if you have a more complex geometry like this number three, you'll see that when you shrink it, it's not really shrinking all parts uniformly. Um, you can see on the outskirts that it does um, <clears throat> it does scale down much stronger than the interior parts. Um, so when you have this kind of these complicated geometries where the part might kind of curve in and around like this, you're not going to be able to scale so easily uniformly down and have a simple solution. So in these situations where you definitely need the higher bevel width or the higher curve spans um, and, you, and you're getting some type of distortion or the artifacting and you need to bevel outside of the curves and you can't just scale it down, then you're going to have to uh, resort to a lattice deformer. And the trick with the lattice is you're going to need high enough resolution in your lattice deformer to have divisions between your geometry. So you can see here in the three that this geometry, uh, the divisions of lattice is, is almost strong enough where I could just select these lattice points just to move this part. But you could see that there isn't um, a lattice division between this geometry and this geometry here. So there is going to be some problems. So I can tell right now that this lattice needs more divisions to uniformly scale parts of this uh, three without affecting the neighboring parts. So this is going to be a little trial and error, but as long as you can draw a line with the um, with the lattice points, not touching any of the geometry, like I can cut right through and up in this part of the three, and can I go and I can go down too and cut right down here without touching any geometry. Then this should be enough geometry, uh, enough divisions of the lattice to move the parts of the three without affecting the other parts. So then we can scale it all down to fit in the original curve. And let's begin by moving that. You can see I, I moved this part here. So actually, I am going to need a little bit more geometry. Uh, divisions in the lattice. And now that I have enough divisions to play with the individual areas of the three, I'm going to start by scaling down <clears throat> the geometry to get a big parts to fit. So here I have the outside of the three almost scaled in so that it fits perfectly within the curve. And now I'm going to take the individual lattice points of certain areas that still need more movement to fit in perfectly. Now I'm getting these, these outer outer tips of the three and I have them moved in. Um, I could also move in this part of the three. And 
There we go. And we have the bottom parts. This is where it just takes a little finagling, but it is fitting back within the section of the curve. And here's the inside part of the three. Just scale him up. Bring this little nub end part in. And you see we're almost there. Just some last minute, last minute changes. You can't make sure you don't want to go through other lattice points. Just be aware of your surroundings. And there you go. So using the lattice tool, you're able to scale up the three, the geometry. Let me just hide the lattice and you can have a better look at the three. And he fits within the curve and he doesn't have that distortion over here that you saw. And I was able to get the strong bevel widths and the high curve spans and keep them within the curve with uh, avoiding the artifacts and the distortions to the geometry. So the current method of the Bevel Plus workflow that is taught in the instructional videos is very good for 90-95% you know, of the time. It's quick and it's successful to use. But now this modification is just for those certain times when you're uh, getting artifacts due to the bevel width or the curve spans. And you definitely need those higher bevel widths or curve spans to meet your project needs of the motion graphics. Or you're getting these distortions in certain areas of your geometry. So with these two issues, this modification should really address them and really add to this technique that's taught in the instructional videos. Thank you.